All right. All right, if you really want to know.
Give us your young men firm and fresh. Give us the strength to do God's will. Teach us to pray and then to kill. For the love of God. Why? For the love of God. Let me die. listened to your story, but I must honestly tell you, I don't believe it. Well, neither does anybody else. That's why I usually tell another one. You fabricate? I tell them what they want to hear. Uh, sir, some for Happy Tom, wounded at Buena Vista. Oh, lady, a shilling for General Scott's soldier, crippled in both pins at glorious Contreras. <laughs> There. Now you know what kind of soldier I am. Aye. One that fights not the Mexican, but a foe worthy of such tactics. Fortune. But then you don't have a mind to expose me? Oh, charity never faileth, my friend. You're not a scoundrel, you're a philosopher. You have found that woes when told to strangers for money are best sugared. Though your real tale is far more pitiable than this lighter and false ill attracts. While the heavier and real one might repel. Yeah, well, aren't I for all that a crooked man fit for a crooked world? My friend, you're talking to a bone setter whose vocation is to set the crooked world straight. Well, then go bone set the crooked world. And then come back and bone set crooked me. You have confidence in your art. Why not have confidence in my art? Did you see a legal guinea aboard here this morning? I prescribed for him, and I shouldn't wonder at all if in a very short time he were able to walk as well as you and me. Uh, well, as, uh, as, as well as myself. Uh, still, you take this sail, hmm? and you rub it on your joints morning and evening. It'll cost you nothing. Now, uh, good, good day. Wait, no, no, stay, stay. Hey, you, you gave me something for nothing. Are you sure this will do me good? <laughs> well, try it. Now, please, don't deceive me. I couldn't take it. I need something to believe in. Now, now are you sure this will do me good? Possibly. Possibly. Now, now there's no harm in, in the trying. Now, go stay here. Wait, no, no, stay, stay. Give, give me three bottles. No, no, give me six. Give me six. What do you want for these? No, I, I couldn't take anything from you. No, 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 you've done enough for me already. Here, 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 take that. My, my friend, I, uh, I rejoice in the rebirth of your confidence. Believe me, like your crutches, confidence will Long support a man when his own legs cannot. You, uh, you stick to it then. Since how mad for a cripple to throw away his crutches. And God bless you. God help me.
in its sons and daughters. Warm finger breezes got a hold of me. Proud arms are pulling me forward. Ancestral tears are washing over me. I'm crying cause I'm travel tired. There, within here, any member or any agent of any charitable institution, any charitable institution, whatever, if there be, I have some money for him. Well, then, if there be no one connected with such an institution, is there no one in need of charity? No one deserving of charity? I have here some money. Will nobody claim this money? Here, here, you, sir. Here. Here, you. You, sir. Surely, surely you. Well, I... Surely you won't let me down. Well, I would hate you. I... Of course you would. Well, what reason would there be to you given more than you've gotten, haven't you? Well, I'll tell you. Oh, sure. Yes. The world owes you something, doesn't it? And if you don't accept it, it will only go to somebody else, true? There you are, sir. I congratulate you, sir. And I thank all of you for giving me this real lesson in charity. Never could abide. Never could abide irony. Never could abide. Never could abide satire. Irony and satire tire me. Tire me in my pursuit of genuine. Extraordinary. Good day, sir. Helpman's the name. I appeal to you on behalf. Then you do know him. Yes. And he is what he seems to be. Yeah. At the last landing, I myself assisted the poor cripple ashore. No time to talk, only to help. Really? Mm -hmm. I regret his going without my seeing him again. You see, shortly after leaving St. Louis, his veracity was challenged, and I, at his entreaty, went in search of you. But not finding you and catching no glimpse of several of the others he had enumerated, I began to have doubts, and I just ah. did not see. Yes. Prompted by this man's distrust, I began to suspect. Sir, am I to take it that you lack confidence in the Negro? You may take it that he is a white scoundrel, be twisted and painted. No. A white? Masquerading as a black? You have my meaning. But if a white, how do you look the Negro so? I, for one, should call it pretty good acting. <laughs> <laughs> Not any better than any other man acts. The silent fiddler, for example. White? The fiddler, too? Masquerading as white as his name? I see no reason not. Hmm. But about white, how could you look the Negro so? Never saw the Negro minstrels, I suppose. Mm, uh, I would have to overdo the ebony. The other one black could look the white man so? What you saw fine, they're two of a kind. Sanctimonious sand. 
his tambourine. Silent Sam with his tambourine. Fiddling fibs with Miasmin. One man's mumbo jumbo is the other's dumb show. A two faced, two some black and white. Demonious Sambo Stretching truth with his outstretched paws Silent Sam with his damn ball Fingering a sacred song Pinchbeck limbs akimbo Or oh, pinch lips in limbo Crooked bookends white and black
Sam Everton did? To the discerning eye. Hmm. I should hate to be the one you scrutinize against so carefully. Uh, I quick the thought of what disguises you might attribute to me. Who? Gentlemen, my conscience upbraid me. Oh, poor Negro, when next you see him, will you give him this might for me? No, no, let me add to that. Uh, and since you are of this truly charitable humor, sir, you will not turn away an appeal from the Seminole Widows and Orphans Asylum, will you? Well, if you lack confidence, in vain my appeal to you. No, stay! Oh, instead of indulging in present suspicions, I'd rather make amends for previous ones. Oh. Here, here's something for your asylum. And may I never be deaf to the call of charity again. Amen. Very generous. Very generous. You two greenhorns. You make a profession out of collecting money for church and charity. So you think money is man's sole motive in this world. How much money did the devil make by tempting Eve? Men with hands in other people's pockets. Money! Ugh. Bah! <laughs> the man lacks confidence. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. I must be off. Yeah. Good day, sir. Deal dum da dum dum dum. Deal deal. Good day. Good day. Good day. Good A word. Blossom. I beg your pardon. All right. Get some. I fear we're off on the wrong foot. Uh, <clears throat> how may I be of service to you? By dispatching yourself. Is the sight of humanity so very disagreeable to you then? When it tries to encompass all humanity in one costume. Yes. Ah, life is a picnic. Our costume. One must uh, take a part, assume a character, stand ready in a sensible way to play the fool. More the fool, you. Ah, I may be foolish, but that good dish man still delights me, served up a la Rochon, a la Chinese, a la Yankee. A la Fooey. You are a taster of races. You sip and compare. You smack your lip over the racy creature. And what disagrees with you, you spit out. Hmm. You make me sound ruthless. Still, the principle of a true citizen of the world is to return good for ill. Good, then return. For I am getting ill. Here, take this with you, Diogenes. Lead us from the darkness of this world to the light of... No. Better yet. You can help me find my ring. Oh, you lost a ring? Yes, a very valuable one. My mother bought it for me for my last birthday. My father would pay at least $500 for its return. Ooh. Be assured that it is not the reward, but the damsel in distress that fixes me here. Let me help. You're not looking. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> At what? One jewel searching for another. <laughs> well, now, if you spoke Diagen. less of humanity and more of jewelry, you might get someplace.
silk of your side. I could polish a diadem of jewels for your crown. Let me string and bedeck last night's stars for your necklace every day. we go? Where? Where we can be alone. But we are alone. More alone. Hmm? More alone is in separate directions. Uh, but you said... But you sang. Uh, I sang enough. If you would trust me. Trust you? You're not real. You're an actor. Oh, costume. And now you've spoiled it. I spoiled it. A minute ago, you were eating up every word. And two minutes ago, you were eating up humanity. A la Russia, a la Chinese, a la Yankee. Let's go back a moment. It's too late. Now sing with that gleam in your eye, please. You are the man who built himself a palace of moonbeams. And when the moon set, was surprised that his palace vanished with it. See you round, Diogenes. <coughs> never could abide, never could abide. Irony, irony is so unjust, hmm? Never could abide, never could abide. Satire, something so satanic about it. Irony and satire tire me, tire me. God, defend me from sir. Mark of a true gentleman. You think so? Oh, quality. Anyone can see you're the genuine item. No, thank you. In my line, you meet so many of the other kind, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Oh, I do. 
Excuse me, sir. Who will I be? Uh, what is it you've got there? A ring. Not a bad one either, as far as I can tell. Here, let me examine it for you. Oh, I'd be much obliged, sir. Go. Oh, it's glass. Worthless imitation, sorry to say. Well, you'd be the one to know, sir. <laughs> Good thing I didn't spend it first, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And yet a pretty little bauble. I'll give you, oh, five dollars for it, hmm? Not mine to sell, sir. A memento of my trip. Six? Mm, why can I fancy it? A ten. I'll give you ten. Mm, I don't think so, sir. Twenty, twenty, twenty. I'd rather fancy it myself. Uh, thirty? My last offer, thirty? I couldn't part with it for less than fifty, sir. Uh, all right. It's a deal. Fifty it is. I'm afraid I'm making the better of the bargain. By your own words, sir. Glass, worthless. Uh, I'm just a sentimental fool. <laughs> Never could abide. I'm a son. Uh -huh. That's correct. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, you'll excuse me, sir. I've got the law to uphold. To hold up is more like $50. Yes, I love humanity for what it could be, but I hate it for what it is. Perhaps if you had something to eat, sir. I'm not seasick. No, thank you. I just ate my heart out. <laughs> Those two men. The one a disgrace to that uniform and the other taking advantage of the officer's ignorance and avarice? Unconscionable. But you created him, sir. I know I created him, but not for that. To produce a mighty volume, one must choose a mighty theme. No great and enduring volume can ever be written upon uh, the flea, though many there be who've tried it. Yes, sir, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Perhaps I'm out of line. <laughs> But even so, he's quite an original. Yes, sir, he's quite an original. Excuse me, sir. Quite an original, okay? Who is it? Tell me. You weren't intended for this. What have you done to the representative of the Philosophical Intelligence Agency? No, I cut him. Oh. Eliminated him. In God's name, why? Uh, because I was too tired to make another costume change. You have no idea how demanding this is. Oh, oh, I know, I know, but I'm the one that has to do it. But the representative of the Philosophical Intelligence Agency is an important character. He expresses the ideas of the... Oh, come on. Oh, they don't care about your ideas. You de de damn near impelled yourself on a cross of your ideas. Every idea you had cost you at least a dozen readers. Hmm? But the representative of the, the Philosophical Intelligence, Intelligence Agency, Agency didn't work anyway. He didn't work. Sorry. And his victims? They didn't work on it. And these people would be here all night, and the streets aren't all that safe, and they don't want to be here all night. <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> we have enough victims, hmm? You can't do it. I forbid you. I can do anything I want. A scoundrel. You're wicked. You created me. Made me what I am. How you don't like what you see, do you? You're an imposter! A credit to my creator. I can damn well destroy you too. I'm not exactly known to my happy endings. Be warned. I don't... <laughs> I don't think so, Mr. Melville. Oh, I don't think so. 
You haven't read the end of my story very carefully. I quote, something further may follow of this masquerade. And you haven't read the end of mine. Yours. Mine. I surprised you, don't I? At sea, a fellow comes out. Salt water is like wine in that respect. Good night. Good day, sir. Good day, sir. A shave. Shave. <clears throat> no trust. No trust. Do you suffer from echolalia, sir? Echolalia, sir. Will you stop repeating long enough to explain that odious sound to me? I think I know what I'm talking about, but I'm talking about humanity, because I've seen everything that is capable of the deliberate rules of purely supposition that if I wanted to owe you for my shave, you wouldn't have... <coughs> you wouldn't have confidence in me? Well, being that it's not you, sir, that's right. You think man false? I find it so, sir. Perhaps it's this trade I follow. Yeah. Oh, well, not so fast with your brush, Barber. How has your trade convinced you mankind is false, hmm? Can one be forever dealing in Macassar oil, hair dyes, Cosmetics, false mustaches, wigs, and toothpaste, and still believe that men are what they appear to be? They calls me the Black Guinness, sir. Uh. What's that? I oh, didn't mean to alarm you, sir, just recalling that painted devil from this morning. You're certain the man was an imposter, then? Worse, a clown, artless in his artifice. You have taken man by the nose or by the beard and consequently lost all the respect. As you say, I have taken men by the nose and by the beard and consequently lost respect for him. Sir. Still, I would love to get my hands on that pseudo-doctor now. I'm just a human of leaving these streets on his paint. Now, would you be lathered? <laughs> Proceed, Barber. What? Keep it ever a bag of such heaps of fine friends, such wealthy acquaintances, but who meet again? A circle of country that's responsive to all this, but the friendship that always was the heavy extent. Oh, it's my heart, ah, your very fist, and open oh, click on a turn if you slash in your fist. There's nothing as comfy as a town on a third who has a family. <laughs> ah, and my compliments for the shave, a close shave. <laughs> but you see, your sign distresses me. I am a philanthropist. Which means you know better what goodness is than what men are. Still, if you would take down your sign, uh, I would go security for you. You would? Mm -hmm. Against any laws? Unreservedly. In writing? If you take down your sign. <laughs> no, I commend your action. In writing? Uh, very well. <coughs> Now, let's...
let's see, what is your name, Barber? William Cream, sir. William Cream, sir. <laughs> Agreement between Francis Goodman, philanthropist, and citizen of the world, and William Cream, a barber of the Mississippi steamer, Fair Dele, the first <clears throat> hereby agrees to make good to the last any loss that may come from trusting mankind in the way of his vocation for the present trip, provided that William Cream have confidence in all mankind and keep out of sight his notification of no trust. Done in good faith this April 1st. 1861, a uh, for the said Francis Goodman. William Queen Duck. Now, all that remains for me now is to receive the cash. Yeah, what cash? Why, you just agreed to insure me against any certain loss and... Uh, certain? Is it so certain that you're going to lose, hmm? Well, no, sir, I didn't mean certain loss. I meant certain loss. Certain loss. Well, <laughs> surely in good faith you would place in my hand a money pledge of, say, $50. Oh, well, surely I would, but by doing so would cause you to breach your agree agreement by having no confidence in the very man you made your agreement with. No, I won't do it to you. You see, I am a philanthropist. And so, good night for now. Aren't you forgetting something? Hmm. Huh? Okay, no, nothing, good night. Sir, the shaving. Ah, yes, dear me, I did forget that. Uh, but I shan't pay you at present. Uh, to our agreement, you must trust. And you hold the guarantee against loss. Good night. Yes, certain loss. <laughs> How much do I owe you? Oh, you don't owe me. That'd be 20 cents, please. Of course, but what about your agreement? I'll never see him again, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. He's quite an original. My little... Be something greater than a flea. <laughs> He's quite an original. One little smidginal show. Men get greater as they grow. Men grow greater as they grow. Yes. <laughs> up on the good book and I have confidence a confidence in man confidence in my country well, I too have confidence oh, confidence in man what a body confidence in man I, I love man I trust man uh, to distrust the creature is to distrust the creator oh, very good very rightly so you, what, what are you doing in here? You can't come in here. I'm in, aren't I? Yeah, momentarily, and for what purpose? I'm a seller of traveler's protection. Uh, this gentleman will not be needing any of your devices, will you? Oh, well, I, well, that's exactly what they are. Devices to discourage thieves. No, 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 such devices discourage mankind. Oh, but this noble fellow cannot be uh, discouraged or sub-trusted or unconfident, can you? Uh, what I, I, but suppose... 
I suppose nothing. This is a man of confidence, I tell you. Wait a minute. Let's just hear what the young lady has to say. This is such a good idea. Sure it is. Your fortune resides with me. <laughs> Lay one hand on me now and I'll have you locked up. Daddy! Daddy! Ooh. What's going on here? Oh. Turn it! Oh. 
right, Daddy. Let me take over from here. Daddy! All right, darling. I'm right here if you need me. Now, now, look, you've got my money. What, what more do you want? You. <laughs> me? Look closer, Mr. Goodman, or Mr. Ringman, or whoever you are. I'm the girl who gave you all her sympathy, and a little more, when you were the pathetic gentleman in mourning over a year ago. The girl you promised the world to and slipped away from the next morning. Look closer, sir. Now do you remember me? And who are you now? A fool to have forgotten one so lovely. <laughs> Your father, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the local law. It's always scared old town boys away, but you didn't even stay long enough for me to tell you. Mm, more the fool me. And you still want me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I guess I get you after all. You were as hard to catch as I was. All right, Daddy. We'll be fine now. Is he going to make an honest woman of you? <laughs> Welcome, son. Mm. <laughs> well, at least she supplied her own wedding ring. Not that ring. Worthless. Imitation. Oh, no, that was mine. That was just so I... Hey, now, wait a minute. I, I paid good money for this. Like you said, son. Cheap glass. Now you can take my word for it. Well, not exactly. It was worth $20 to you. 20 I paid 50 for it. 50 he told me he bored you, we divided at 2020. <laughs> Daddy, how could you? <laughs> well, you're on your own now, darling. Uh, you have to learn to take care of yourself. <laughs> As for you, do the right thing by my daughter. I have confidence in you, son. <laughs> Just remember, I can still run you in if I have to. I'm still the law around here. What is your name? When North New is seen, hug the shore. Faith. I should have known. Faith. Uh, is this what you had in store for me? Hardly. This is your ending. Remember? If, if you can write another one. Too late. You rewrite? No. Her name is Faith. And what do I do now?
confidence, give what you can.